The Memphis Grizzlies originally just had the 40th pick in the draft, but they ended up with the last pick in the first round and the 35th pick and got some good value. With John ja Moran and Dylan Brooks being streaky outside shooters so far in their careers, the Grizzlies look to get some outside shooting with their 30th pick. They selected a two-way player out of TCU, Desmond Bain. He was a marksman from deep in his senior year. He shot 44% from three, and he also can run the pick and roll very well. He has a little Malcolm Brogdon in his game. Bain is a capable on-ball defender and plays with energy and toughness. He played the passing lanes well, which led to a lot of deflections and steals. With their 35th pick, they drafted the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, Xavier Tillman. He reunites with his old teammate at Michigan State and Jaron Jackson Jr. On offense, Tillman does most of his scoring inside the paint, and he developed into a solid playmaker at Michigan State. Outside shooting is something he lacks at the moment, but the defensive end is what he's known for. He uses his size and physical frame with his 7'2 wingspan to contest and alter shots. Because of his awareness and instincts, he knows where he needs to be and is always in the right spot. The Grizzlies made the moves that needed to be made to get two quality prospects that could play at least a small role as early as this season. I give the Grizzlies a B. Coming off a season where you had the best offensive rating of all time, the Dallas Mavericks decided to focus on defense in this draft. With their 18th pick, they went with Arizona standout Josh Green. He brings tenacious defense and above the rim athleticism. What also makes him prime to be a plus defender in the league, his NBA ready frame, which is 6'5", 210 pounds. The Mavericks needed to add more size in the backcourt and they did it with this pick. His offense is still a work in progress. He's a good finisher in transition and at the rim and he did shoot a respectable percentage from three. But Green is not a versatile offensive player. He may be down the line, but not now. With their 31st pick, the Mavericks lucked out and picked a player I thought was worthy of a lottery selection, Terrell Terry. He has game-changing shooting ability, an ability that could make an offense reach another level. Not only is he a good shooter, but he has an excellent feel for the game and has a passing gift. Now he's not as quick as a Trey Young or a Steph Curry, but he does share some similarities. He measured bigger than expected in the offseason, but he still has to work on getting stronger. That was probably the main reason why he fell in the draft, because teams question could he hold up on defense. With Jalen Brunson and Trey Burke on the squad, Terry will probably spend a lot of time in the G League, prepping himself to be able to thrive once the Mavericks are ready for him. Another move to bring size to the backcourt, they traded Seth Curry for Josh Richardson and also got the 36 pick, which they used on forward Tyler Bay. The Mavericks lack an elite or close to elite defender. They have that in Josh Richardson. Now Richardson is not a dead eye shooter from long distance, but he can score the rock. But more importantly for the Mavericks to take the next step, their defense needs to get better. Now Tyler Bay doesn't play in the backcourt, but he's also a menace on the defensive end. He's athletic, has a high motor, can defend multiple positions, a great rebounder for his size, and is an improving three-point shooter. Bay plays more like a power forward than anything. Because of his wingspan and athleticism, I could see him playing a four spot more than a small forward position. This was a good draft for the Dallas Mavericks. I give them a B plus. For the first time since 1997, the San Antonio Spurs picked in the lottery. Ever since Kawhi Leonard was traded, the Spurs have been searching for that special wing defender. And they seem to have found one with their 11th pick, Devin Fussell from Florida State University. There was talk about Fussell possibly getting drafted in the top 10 early on. But this is a great value at this spot. I don't think the Spurs would have changed their selection even if they had a higher pick. Vassell is a 6'6 wing who plays hard, defends at a high level, and shot the lights out from three-point range for two years at Florida State. He has a high floor. At the very least, he'll be a solid starter in the league. But he did show at times he could be more than a catch-and-shoot type of player on offense. It'll be hard for him to get minutes in his rookie year. You still have DeMar DeRozan for the time being, along with the other young players like Lonnie Walker, Brent Forbes, and Derek White. With the 41st pick, the Spurs selected one of the best perimeter defensive players in college basketball. I'm sure the Spurs wanted to pick up a big man at this spot, but most of them were gone at this pick. Trey Jones is a true point guard, who has a great feel for the game and is the absolute beast on defense. His outside shooting is a question mark, and he will have to improve it. Can he be enough of an offensive threat 
to be able to run a team effectively, the Spurs do have a lot of ball handlers on the team. This would be an important year for players like DeJounte Murray and Derek White. Maybe by next year, we'll get a better view of the situation in the backcourt and where it's headed. I give the Spurs a B. There is a lot of uncertainty with the Houston Rockets right now. Are they going to trade both of their stars or not? When is the best time? With the Rockets looking like they will eventually head to a rebuild, using the 16th pick they acquired from the Blazers was a good way to add young talent to an old roster. But for some reason they decided to trade it just to get Trevor Reese's contract off the books. The crazy thing about this was only $2 million of his $13 million salary was guaranteed. Literally just waiving him would have been the best solution to cut spending without giving up a mid first round pick. And Ariza isn't the same player he was last time he played for the Rockets, but he still can play a valuable role on the championship contender. The Rockets could have easily traded him to another team without giving up that pick. None of that made any sense. Seems like there's a lot of incompetence with the front office and the owner. The Rockets ended up buying a pick from the Lakers in the second round and selected the son of Kenyon Martin, KJ Martin. He is viewed as one of the most athletic players in the draft. He played his postgraduate year at IMG Academy and averaged 19 points, 8 rebounds, 1.5 steals, and 1 block per game. He plays more like a power forward, even though he has small forward size. KJ stands at 6'7", 215 pounds. He has the same elite athleticism that his father had when he played. Being a consistent jump shooter is the number one goal for him going forward. That will set him up to get on the court and get playing time. This was a low risk, high reward pick for the Rockets, but this does not make up for what they already did early in the draft. I give the Rockets a D. The New Orleans Pelicans walked away on draft night with only one pick. That pick was a 13th pick. They used it on Alabama point guard Kyra Lewis Jr., quite possibly the fastest player in the entire draft. The Pelicans played at one of the fastest paces in the league last year. What better prospect to add than a player with lightning speed and quickness? Even though he played two years in college, he's still only 19 years old and has a lot of room to grow. Breaking down his opponents and getting to the rim is one of his best skills. He brings speed off the dribble, and that's something the Pelicans lacked last season. But his speed can be a curse. He had a lot of turnovers because of being out of control at times. Knowing when to use your speed is very important. This could be a make or break season for Lonzo Ball in New Orleans. He had a solid year before the bubble in Orlando, but his play in the bubble raised a lot of questions. And with him being a restricted free agent next year, and the team drafting a point guard in Kyra Lewis Jr., Lonzo will have to prove that his play in the bubble was an aberration. I give the Pelicans a B plus. 